Welcome to the Living Unconventionally podcast. I'm Brittany Felix, and every Monday I'll be speaking with someone that realized a traditional life with a soul-sucking 9-to-5 job just wasn't for them. They had the courage to go against what society told them they should want, and now they chase their passions all over the world. We'll discuss their unconventional journey and their exciting and sometimes terrifying travels. Every Wednesday we'll continue that conversation by talking about just how they can afford to travel so often and live a life of freedom most people only ever dream of. Every Friday, I'll answer your questions and offer advice and encouragement to help you start living unconventionally. If you allow yourself to be inspired by my amazing guest, one day I may just be featuring you in your world travels. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back for the second solo episode. As you hopefully already know, Monday and Wednesdays are two-part interviews with a guest. This past week, I had Ryan and Amanda from the World Wanderers podcast, and we had an amazing conversation about their philosophy on travel, ways that they find discounts and deals on airfare, hostel stays, and what that's really like. It was just an an all-around awesome conversation. So if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure that you do so. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you guys an update on my personal journey. Last week, I gave you guys a brief overview of my husband and I's plan to sell off our 2,000 square foot home, quit our jobs, and take off around the United States in an RV. And there has been some exciting progress with regards to that journey. My husband and I have been talking about this RV plan since the beginning of November, I believe, maybe even end of October. And I was so excited for it when we first decided to do this, when we decided that, yes, this is, we're going to make this happen somehow. But the problem with deciding that a few months ago was that it was just a tad bit too soon for us to really get going on anything. The winter time is not exactly the best time to hold a garage sale or list your house for sale. We had, you know, holidays with the families. Just a ton of stuff going on. I was working on, you know, the beginning stages of getting this podcast launched and all of the crazy amount of things that goes along with that. It just was not the best time. So we could start saving up money and we could start coming up with all these plans, but we couldn't actually implement any of them. And it was a very frustrating time for me because once I get an idea in my head, once I have a project to work on, something that I'm extremely excited about, I tend to get a little obsessive over it. And once we decided to go for this RV route, I just wanted to do everything right then, right there. I'm an extremely impatient person. So the past few months have been nerve wracking for me. The problem is I spent so much time focusing on being patient about everything that it all just kind of snuck up on me. And now it's time for us to start purging our belongings, get going with getting the house ready to be listed on the market. We have to get the RV in the shop. Just there's this whole insane amount of things that we have to do before we can actually hit the road. And one of the main things that's been hanging over our heads this whole time we've been planning is the sale of our home. The amount of money that we make off of the sale, or we hopefully make off of the sale, is really kind of what our whole trip hinges on. The more money we make, the longer we can stay out on the road. And luckily, we were smart, even though we were very excited first-time homebuyers. We did go into it more with the mindset of, let's not really look for our dream home. Let's look for what's going to give us money when we sell it, because we know we're going to. I don't know anyone that stayed in their very first home that they ever bought. So, you know, luckily, we, we had our wits about ourselves when we were doing that. We didn't get caught up in the excitement. But, I mean, you know, when it comes to the real estate market, you can do everything right. You can have everything planned. You can try and be a smarter as prepared as you can be, but you really have no control over what the market does or, you know, what your house actually ends up being worth or how much somebody's willing to pay for it, really. So that's been this this thing looming in the back of our minds. And one of the big hurdles for me was getting that process going of selling the house because it is an extremely daunting one. So the big development this past week was I finally started making phone calls to realtors and we found a realtor that we love. He actually came out to our house this past weekend, looked everything over and the surprise of all surprises, which our life never works out this way. uh, He actually told us that we didn't need to do quite a bit of the things we were planning on doing. We had planned on painting every single 
single square inch of our house. We're going to be replacing all of the floors. I thought we needed to replace countertops and maybe even sinks and light fixtures and just do all this crazy stuff. And he came in and, and basically said, mm, no, not really. I wouldn't worry about it. So I uh, think, you know, that's going to save us time and money, which is awesome. And he's going to come back actually this coming week with some numbers and some details and give us a pretty good idea of what he thinks our house can sell for. And then also almost just as important to me is how long he expects it to be on the market before it sells because I am extremely unhappy in my job and the sooner that we can quit, the happier I will be. So now we are beginning the process of really purging our belongings. I've got piles of stuff everywhere. I've sorted through the majority of my clothes. And for somebody who constantly says to herself, I have nothing to wear. I hate everything I own. I don't like any of my clothes. I have a crazy amount of clothes. And I'm sure that a lot of you females listening can probably relate to this. But I was sorting through all of them and I found shirts that I had completely forgotten I ever even owned, jeans that I thought honestly I had thrown out a long time ago, and I've got six, I think, yeah, six or seven extremely full trash bags full of clothes that I I don't even know why I bought in the first place, to be honest. And, you know, I still have a lot of purging to do, especially to go into a 24-foot RV, but I do have to work in the meantime, so I do need more than about three or four shirts. But what all of this has has shown me, I mean, it's it's just my husband and I and our two dogs, you know, they don't really require much. It's insane the amount of stuff that two people can acquire. When I think about all the money that we have spent on everything that is inside this home, it's it's mind boggling to me. We could have taken a very long, very exciting trip, you know, all over the world with the money that we've spent on just the material belongings inside of our home. And it's just really reaffirmed our decision that stuff doesn't matter. Stuff is not important. And, you know, life experience are what matters. Getting to know people from other cultures, seeing all of these amazing, breathtaking landscapes all over the world, you know, that's what matters. Connecting with human beings, finding your true purpose in life, spending time with the people you love, those are the things that matter. It may sound crazy. Some of you may not be able to understand this. Some of you may completely relate, but my husband is my best friend. I mean, he really, truly is. I enjoy every second I get to spend with him. This coming weekend, actually, on Valentine's Day, we will have been together for nine years. We're college sweethearts, and I still want to be near him all the time. I still want to experience new things with him. I want to laugh with him and and just go on adventures with him. And I hate spending time apart from him. That's not to say that I, you know, I, I can't be without him. I can. I'm, I'm an independent person. I love my alone time as well. But when you truly enjoy someone else's company, when they truly are your best friend, you know, you, you want to be with them. It's fun to be around them. And as it is now, we get to experience a, a few hours with each other, you know, in the evening, that's it. And, you know, we get the weekends together, but he plays in a band, so he's practicing a lot. And, you know, he goes off to gigs, which are out of town. And I've been working on the podcast and, and really kind of getting things developed from a professional side so that I can transition over into online business once we quit our day jobs. And we just really don't get that much time together. I'm just excited, honestly, to spend several months on the road with my best friend. And that's what's really important to me in life, spending time with the people that you love and going on those adventures and having the freedom to live the life that you know you were meant to live. You know, I used to think when I was younger that the way to get that freedom was to have this insane amount of money by becoming an actress or country singer, even though I can promise you no one wants to hear me sing. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that it's not the money that I desire. It's, you know, it's the freedom. And there are other ways to get that freedom. I don't need to make ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month. I just want to make enough to fund a lifestyle of freedom, to fund a lifestyle of choices, of spending time with my husband, of being able to travel and experience other cultures and countries being able to take trips with some of my other best friends. And I really just don't want to ever have to say no to any opportunities that I want to seize. I've said this before. It's not that I don't want commitments or responsibilities. I don't have any disillusions of thinking that I can create a life where I never have to do anything I don't want to do. That's just not realistic. 
That's not how life is. But I don't want to have to say no to the chance to spend a week with a friend who's visiting from out of state because I have to go to work the next day. You know, I just, I just want the freedom. I just think that there are so many more important things in life than a job and a career and a paycheck. And I'm not saying they aren't important. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I have debt. I've got bills. You know, I have dogs that I have to take care of. And one of them has multiple medical conditions that she requires, you know, medication for the rest of her life for and a special diet. And I mean, that all requires money. Trust me. Um, Knee surgeries for dogs are not cheap. So I'm not saying that money isn't important. It is. Anyone who tells you that it's not is lying. I'm just saying that it's not the most important thing and that chasing the money is the wrong way to go about life. You need to chase your passions and then figure out a way to kind of get a little bit of money in there so that you can get by. So that's the update on our RV journey. We are getting one step closer. We're going to be working on our house over the next few weeks and hopefully we'll have it listed the first or second week of March. I'm a very optimistic person, so it's probably not going to be quite that soon if we're going to talk realistically. But that's our goal, and I can't wait to continue to share the updates with you guys on these Friday episodes. And if there's anything else that you want to know about me, anything that you want me to talk about in these episodes, if you want to try and have my husband on sometime, maybe get to know him, anything like that, just stop on over on my website, livinguncontentionally.com, and head on over to the Contact Me page where you can send me an email and let me know your thoughts on these episodes and what you want included. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope you have a great day.